Good evening, Saints. It's Evangelist Roxanne with Tacoma Christian Center, and thank you for joining me tonight for the Friday night message. I don't know how we do it, but sometimes we put God in a box. He is so immense. He is over everything, and yet somehow while we know that in our mind, when we get into the day-to-day, we let other things in our lives become bigger than he is. We forget who he is and who he wants to be in our life because the reality is he only gets to be as big in our life as we allow him to be. In the first chapter of the book of Colossians, it talks about Christ and how supreme he is, right? Christ was the firstborn over all creation. That means everything that's been created is subject to Christ. It says, for in him all things were created things in heaven, things on earth, things visible, things invisible. That means there's nothing that is out of his control, out of his understanding, out of his reach, because all things have been created through him and for him. So tonight we're going to talk about our God, the God of all. Well, there are so many different scriptures that talk to us about all God does and all he is in the height and breadth and width of all of his authority. I thought tonight we would focus on one simple scripture that just really introduces us to all he does for us if we just meditate upon this one word. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 19. Now, many of us know this scripture. We're encouraged by this scripture. We're encouraged by the song and we can sing it. But to really meditate upon the fact that he will supply all of our needs. You know, when we read a scripture like this, do we think about it as a promise? Do we think about it 
as a statement of fact that he absolutely will do all those things? Do we think of it just as a, a pep talk, some words of encouragement to make us feel better, but not necessarily expect to see anything different at the end of the day? I just encourage you, any and all scriptures, when it is written, to decide, do I fully believe this? And am I going to grab hold of it and be confident in what it says? Because ultimately, that's what faith is, an assurance and a confidence in God's word. The things that you are hoping for because his word tells you that you should. And Paul made this particular statement after addressing the uh, church at Philippi. They were all talking about how individuals had been contributing to Paul's ministry. Some did, some didn't. But at the end of the day, Paul said, you know what? I've learned to be content and I don't worry about whether people give or don't give, if they say they're going to send resources and they do or they don't, because I know I am taken care of. And as a matter of fact, Philippians, you wonderful church at Philippi, know this, that your God will also supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. It's not about what I have to give you or what anybody else has to give you. We both get to tap into this wonderful source. And when we absolutely know the source and his ability to give us all things we need because he is over everything, then we don't have to sweat whether or not people follow up with their word and their promises. See, he is Jehovah Jireh. That is just one of the names for God. And it was uh, spoken and taught on about how God provided exactly what was needed in the moment for the situation that Abraham was dealing with. Right? God sees our needs. He sees what needs to be done, and God provides the solution. That's who Jehovah Jireh is. So when we sing about and we hear this scripture that he'll supply all of our needs, we want to know exactly what this means. For him to supply needs, he makes us complete. He fills whatever gap was there. He furnishes. He's satisfied and fulfills the lack that we had. He's going to bring an end to our cause, whatever that need was, to expire and go away. To supply is him filling the hollow spot, the gaps, right? If we already have something, we don't need it. But if we are short on what we need, there's a gap there in the situation. And Jehovah Jireh supplies. He fills the gap. And the gap is related to needs, right? Those essential requirements of life. Sometimes we have desires, sometimes we have wants, but it what comes down to a need, a necessary thing. He is saying, I am the God who provides those needs. Turn to me, look to me, let me provide you with those things. And sometimes we do have faith for our needs. We have just an expectation that we are gonna be taken care of in some areas. But there's other areas where it's harder for us to have that faith when the circumstances are mounting against us. And sometimes our needs are met so frequently that we forget that there is a God who is providing it for us on a daily basis. You know, one way to emphasize or, or teach this came to mind. And this chart is called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Now, you know me, normally I stick strictly to the scriptures, but one thing for us to recognize is that man has studied God's design. God has put all of these things in place. And so they've looked at the human being, the creation that God made, and recognized that inside each one of us, we have some innate needs. We have things that need to be taken care of in our life for us to feel complete. And they've just studied and written down what they've come to understand about us as God's creation. And Maslow then recognized and put this chart together, five different levels of needs, and recognized that if you don't take care of some of the lower level or base needs, it is harder to get that sense of fulfillment and reach the need at the top. So we're gonna look at each of these levels 
in scripture, actually starting at the top and working our way back down because our God shall supply all of our needs, which means he takes care of each of these five levels in a very intimate way. Maslow might have charted out the needs, but he didn't pull together the truth that God is the one that supplies how each one is met. So at the top, the self-actualization, it's achieving full potential, including those creative activities, being able to be the person you were made to be. We all have a purpose. There's a reason for our existence. And we can find that truth in scripture. You know, Ephesians 1, 9 through 11 says that we were made for God's pleasure. Everything in heaven and on earth was made for a purpose. God is the designer and everything that he made fits his design, right? And he works everything in his design towards his will, which is plan. It's his purpose for you. 2 Timothy 1.9 says he saved us and called us to his own purpose, given to us before we were born, right? He has fulfilled our needs and it matters to him. It matters to him to take care of all those needs that get us to that point of purpose to be able to be exactly what he made us to be. You know, achieving our full potential, being self-actualized, is what the Bible calls perfection. And he's urging us to strive towards the perfection. Doesn't mean we don't make mistakes. It just means we are exactly what we were created to be, right? And sometimes people think of faith and Christianity just about this top purpose, right? It's a feel good thing to have a faith and a belief, but it's more than that. Notice that God cares more about us feeling good in the moment he wants to take care of each and every need on the way back. Okay? Our purpose, our reason for existence, that is something that is a need we have that God wants to supply. In the next, we look at worth, right? Our esteem needs, prestige, a feeling of accomplishment, knowing that we are doing something of worth and of value. And we should find value in who we are because Psalms 139, 14 tells us that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God took the time to design you specifically like you are. You matter to him. And we can always have our need for worth met if we focus on the truth that we matter to God we have worth in God's eyes, and that we were created for a specific reason, right? Psalms 8, 5 says that we, mankind, were made just a little lower than the angels, and we were made to have dominion over the works of God's hands. God created this earth, and then he's given each one of us a role and a responsibility, and we accomplish things in our job, in our home life, in our communities, because we reflect, we reflect all those abilities that God has given us. So our steam needs can be met and God has supplied a way for that to happen, right? At the end of the day, we all want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And he keeps putting us in places where we get to achieve things for him and hear that, well done. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are God's handiwork created to do good works that God prepared, God prepared in advance for us to do. So you were created and God has so many things around you that you can do in order to have that sense of accomplishment. We know that the belongingness and love needs are so crucial to who we are. We were made to have these human connections. We were made for intimacy and friendship. And it doesn't have to be a whole big number of people as much as having a few close people in our life that really validate who we are. And God says in scriptures, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because I go with you. Knowing that God is with us 
that he gave this Holy Spirit to be our companion, to commune with us, to be our comforter. We always have that access of an intimate relationship with God, but he also surrounds us with other people. Romans 8, 38 and 39, neither life nor death shall be able to separate us. Nothing can separate us from God's love. That gives us that sense of security, that knowledge that there's always somebody to be sharing in life with us. The last time I ministered, it was about Jesus as our plus one, always there to be sharing in life with us. And not just Jesus, there is fellowship amongst the brethren, right? In Acts 2.42, they just talked about how they were devoted to one another. They broke bread with one another. They gave each other what they needed in order to get by. I'm my beloved and he is mine. When we turn to God to supply all of our needs, we can find him there to fill the gap when relationships around us are struggling, but he also fills it not just with his own presence, he brings people into our life so that we are supported and connected and are in community and fellowship with one another as well. Next is safety needs, right? That sense of security to not feel afraid or that we are at risk. I love Psalms 18.2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, my deliverer, in whom I take refuge, my shield, my stronghold. Think about all those things God ours is in our life. And sometimes we run ahead and we get away from him. We need to come back and be in his embrace be close with him, be, as Job 1.10 says, within his hedge of protection, right? It, you don't run away from home, you stay home so that you can have that shelter. And God provides us that shelter and that peace when we are close with him. So trust comes in, security comes in. Proverbs 29.25 says, fear of man will prove to be a snare. If you're just running around fearing man, fearing what they can do, fearing things, you forget that God supplies all your needs. It says whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. In 3 John 2, again, the safety, the security, it says that there's a desire of God. There's a desire amongst the brethren so that you prosper and you be in health even as your soul prospers. So the security, the sense of safety is about physical well-being, but it's also about spiritual and emotional and mental well-being as well. And God provides that to us. If you're feeling shaken or anxious, right? We're all taught that we're supposed to cast those cares, learn to cast those cares. And it's a lot easier to cast those cares when we know we are casting them to someone who loves us, who will never leave us or forsake us. Somebody who created us specifically for a marvelous design and a marvelous purpose. And at the base of this are the basic survival needs. He calls them physiological needs. Really, what does our body need on a day-to-day -day basis? And we can think about this physically, right? We know we need to eat food. We know we need to drink water. We know we need warmth and clothing and rest. We have to give our body those physical things. But notice in scriptures throughout, it talks about how we receive those things spiritually as well, that our body needs its spiritual survival elements just as much as the physical ones. In John, we're told that he is the bread of life. He says, I am the bread that comes from heaven, giving life to the world. Who comes to me will never go hungry. He's also the living water. Who drinks the water I give, them will become, then in them will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life that refreshing drink of water we can only get by sipping on the spirit, breathing in deep, letting God come and refresh us from the inside out. 
It also says he gives rest to our soul. My yoke upon you, learn of me. Take this yoke, learn of me. You will find rest for your soul. Notice that we take more of God. We take his yoke, which just provides some discipline and parameters for us. It frames and gives us a focus. So we limit ourselves by taking on his yoke, but he's saying, when you do that, I take the weight of it off your shoulders. You're going to find some rest in me. Give resting to your mind, resting to your body, being able to let things go. That's one of the things our God supplies to us when we turn to him and give these needs to him. Scripture says we're clothed with righteousness in Isaiah 61, 20. It says he's clothed me with salvation, arrayed me with the robe of righteousness adorned. To have all of our physiological survival needs met are just foundational to the day to day. And our God shall supply all of our needs. Now, how does he do it? Sometimes it is through our job, right? We get income coming when we need these certain things. We, he's put us into a position to bring those things to us. And it often feels by our own hands, but yet he's positioned us there. But he's also laid upon people's heart to give and to be the supplier of these needs in our life. Right in Matthew 25, he was saying, hey, whatever you do for the least of these, if we do things for people in need, it is the same as doing those things for Christ. He says, take care of brothers and sisters of mine. If you take care of our brothers and sisters, you're taking care of me. So really look to those who serve you, who take care of you, and recognize that God has motivated them to meet needs on your behalf. And then, of course, there is the supernatural intervention, things that you don't expect that aren't coming from your own hands, that aren't even in the queue as far as you know, but yet they arrive because our God has made it possible in ways that we don't even understand how it could be. Right? So God takes care of all of our need so that we can achieve his purpose. Think about it that way. He does not want us to be stuck in survival mode at the bottom, right? He wants us to be able to believe for those things, to realize we have those things, that he is supplying those things for us. And it's not just about getting to the peak or having moments of self-actualization. It is about having the foundation of your physiological needs met, your safety needs, your belonging needs, your esteem needs, all of those needs. He is always providing them, building and strengthening each one of those levels. And the more you know about your God and how he has called you and made you and what he promises you in his word, the more you know that, the higher you're gonna be able to climb into getting more of these needs fulfilled. So if you can start with the faith for the basics and believe for each one, you're going to be able to get stronger and realize that your needs are supplied. And when there's a gap, you know exactly where to turn to get them provided for. So our theme for this year is set the mark, achieve the mark. If you have a particular need, set the mark right now along this pyramid, what is the need that needs to be filled and set the mark right there and say, you know what, God, I am going to now find out and work with you and turn to you for that need to be supplied, knowing that you supply all the needs according to your riches in glory. You know, this makes me think of Romans eight twenty eight, And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose, right? He's called us with a purpose. His purpose was in the forefront when he designed each one of us. So if we really embrace who we are and what we were made to be, of course, he's going to be working to make sure everything works for our good. He's going to be looking to make sure every need is met 
that leads up to our ability to achieve that purpose. If you can't do the purpose because there's belonging or safety or physiological needs that are in the way because they are unfulfilled, well, of course, turning to God and saying, God, I'm going to go after your purpose. And I believe whatever happens and whatever comes forward, you're going to be doing the work to make sure all these needs get met and turn out for my good so that I can do those things. My heart is to do what you called me to do, and what you made me to do. I want to be a good and faithful servant because I love you. And I know that I've been called to do things. So I am ready to do what you made me to do. And I know that everything's going to work out. And one way that all things work out for the good is for God to supply all your needs needed for you to get to that place in your life. Right? He works to take care of what you need so you can reach the top. You can reach the purpose that he has made you for. So how to access his riches and glory. You know, when it says he shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, where are his riches? He's got a heavenly storehouse, right? Everything on heaven and earth, because all things, all things were made by him and for him. All things on heaven and earth, invisible or visible, are subject to him. So since he's got all those things in his storehouse, we want to visit the storehouse. So think about it, whether you think about Costco or Sam's Club or any membership warehouse, the first thing you have to do to access that storehouse is get a membership. If you are not part of Club Jesus yet, get a membership, become a member, make him your God, make Jesus your Lord, come into relationship, right? Go through Romans 10, 9, and 10 and learn what it means to become a child of God because then you will have the membership card to Heaven Enterprises, to Heaven's Storehouse, and you'll have access. Now, the next thing you do is browse online, right? I just took you through some of those scriptures, but the Bible provides you really all the information you need on what God has said he has for you. So you can look through a catalog and you can see things there, but it is not your own possession until you actually order it. And this is where we take the time to initiate our orders with God for him to supply all of our needs. And we do that through faith, right? Faith is the credit. Faith is how we make payment for those things that we find in the catalog that God is saying, I have set this aside for you. I am here to supply all of your needs. That is his truth. But if we never call upon him for those needs, if we never put faith into receiving those needs, they won't arrive. So part of initiating our order with faith, we know there's a sequence to that. We've got to believe it. Find the scriptures, believe the scriptures and what you read. Think about it, understand it, know what he's telling you about that scripture, about that truth, and then speak it and act with confidence, knowing then that you have placed that order and be ready to accept delivery. Be looking for it, right? When you know a package is coming, you are looking for it. You are expecting it. You are excited to see how God fulfills this order, how God supplies the needs. What did he go into that storehouse and find and send your way? Be looking for its delivery. Right? Remember, he is God of all. Of all. There is nothing outside of his abilities. There is nothing outside of his capacity. There is no need that you have that is beyond his reach that he cannot supply. What a privilege and an honor it is to serve a God like this, who loves us so much and is hungry and ready and makes that type of promise that he will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Be blessed. Father, I come to you tonight and I just pray for each person on the line who has a need, Father, because we are turning to you knowing that you supply every need, Father.
whether it is physiological, Father, if there's a need for food, for clothing, Father, if anything is absent in their life, Father, we just call upon you to just supply it and for them to know that it comes from your hand. If there's a need for safety and security, if there is a need, Father, for belonging and to not be alone at this moment, Father, bring a connection to their heart. You give them comfort, Holy Spirit, but also surround them and remind them of those in their life, Father, who love them who need them, who value them, Father God. Let our hearts and minds not be focused on the exceptions, Father, those who don't meet the need, but let our hearts and minds realize how you have supplied and put people in our lives to meet the needs, Father, that we have. We thank you for our worth. We thank you for our talents and abilities. We thank you that we have a place in this world that nobody else can fill. And we just give you all glory for it. We thank you that we were designed by you and we have a mighty purpose, Father. And we get to experience the accomplishment of it, Father. We get to experience well done here on this earth as well as we will when we are in heaven. And we thank you that truly you supply every need. So remind us of this truth. When a need comes up and we're frustrated, Father, it's a need that we actually need to have fulfilled in any moment that we just step back and realize who you are and what your promises are and that we put our faith and our trust in you to supply it. We thank you and praise you for this increase this night in Jesus' name. Amen.